There was a, there was a full start there from uh, New Zealand in lane number four. So it just moved off there. I don't quite know what happened to get New Zealand to go. New Zealand went, then Canada sort of just shifted off. No, well, listen to that <laughs> bell going, I and mean, that's, that's siren. That's All they really need now is a big finger coming out of the sky <laughs> pointing <laughs> at you, really. Yeah. They were well off the start, well, well off the start. Difficult to get moving like that because you've got the, uh, you're being held actually in place by the... Uh, I don't think they've got, there's no scar starting gates here. Had, actually, that's true, I didn't see them go down. No, there's no, no, no gates there on this one. No. Usually we have at uh, international, particularly at the World Championships, we have a starting gate where the bows go into, so which prevents full starts because if you squeeze against it, you're held back and the bell goes again. So New Zealand getting the full start. Do that again, they're out. Interesting to see the Denmark back. They were dominant uh, four or five years ago um, through the World Championships and World, World Cups. You were always uh, that familiar low sitting quist in the stroke seat where he just seems to be almost kind of so short in the body but with long arms and legs. But he sits there and uh, just sculls along very, very effectively. Uh, they were so dominant, and then the British double came along and, and uh, challenged them, and they slipped away. So they haven't been back on, on, on song for about uh, a year and a half now. It's the first time we've really seen them this season. Second time they get away. This time it's clean green lights, and New Zealand, who were awarded a full start on the first attempt, are away nice and quick in lane number four. Italy, there's New Zealand. I'll give you lane order in a second. That's uh, New Zealand Storm Ulu to the bow, and closer to us, Peter Taylor. They were bronze medalists last year at the World Championships in Karapira on their home water. Former world champions until Zach uh, Purchase and Mark Hunter from Great Britain came along winning the Olympic gold medal. They took a year off uh, after that and came back and won the gold medal at World Championships last year. More about Great Britain shortly, but in this race, Italy in one, Denmark in two, Canada in lane number three, New Zealand in four, France in five, and Germany, current World Cup leaders, are in lane number six. Canada went fast in the uh, semis, Van Dorn and Sylvester. They, they moved very quickly and uh, uh, made a, a, a big mark. Um, and also up at the top of the picture, Italy, experienced uh, double skull there, Ilia Luini and uh, Bettini. They were second in the World Championships uh, last year. But Canada, as they did in the semi-final, they just stormed off. And that's a typical Canadian way of racing. They just take off and they stay high and they just hang on for as long as they can. Now, it works very well in eights, but you tend to run out of steam in the smaller boats. So we'll see how long the Canadians can stay there before they get challenged by New Zealand. Just in this uh, category as we come through the 500 meter mark in the final of the men's lightweight double skulls, the maximum individual weight cannot exceed 72 and a half kilograms. The maximum crew weight, the average maximum crew weight cannot exceed 70 kilograms. And all these crews will have weighed in about two hours or so before their uh, race time. It's all about getting down onto race. And hence, because you have a level, level playing field, you don't see so much of a spread. You've got four boats here, pretty much in a line, and then even the fifth boat on the far side, Denmark in lane two, suddenly struggling. They're not that far off in what is a very, very competitive event. It's a shame not to see the British double there, the world champions because, and Olympic champions, but with Zach's illness, uh, his virus, putting him out, it's best to rest him. They do hope that he's going to be back for the world championships in Bled in seven weeks' time, but uh, they did get knocked out in the... Um, uh, the, the Mark Hunter got knocked out, rowing with a spare man uh, earlier in the, re the regatta. Adam uh, Freeman, Pascal, and Mark Hunter were in this event. They came second in the B final, rowing earlier this morning. And so, uh, I guess, Mark is here, and we do wish uh, Zach Purchase all the best for a speedy recovery. To see them back in amongst it all in their traditional place out front, leading the world. We're looking now at France in lane number five. Two years ago, they were world silver medalists. Zoo to your right. Dufour is in the stroke seat. 
Well, it's always a bit weird not seeing the uh, British uh, double leading into the halfway mark as we've come to uh, expect over the last few years. No British uh, challenge today of Mark Hunter and Zach Purchase. So therefore leaving New Zealand, who are the world bronze medalists to lead through the halfway mark in this final of the men's lightweight double skull. So it's New Zealand in lane number four. Canada up there in lane three. Denmark, surprised that Denmark are uh, the, the bronze medalist from Beijing really struggling now to come back in, having taken two years off. Such is the level of performance this event has just moved on from when they were last gracing these waters. With all the weights the same, um, you know, it does level the playing field in lightweight events and lightweight double skull and the men's lightweight four are fantastic uh, races to watch because they really are right down to the line, crews up at, uh, in the fours up to 44 strokes a minute, it's all very, very hot. I haven't said much about Italy up there in lane number one, Bertini and Luini just uh, creeping away, doing their own thing, they were world silver medalists at Carapiro, the world championships in 2010, so bags of experience here, fifth to Munich, the first World Cup regatta. Earlier on in the season, that seems such a long time ago now. But they're in lane number one. They're challenging hard against race leaders, New Zealand. And then slowly but surely, lane two, Denmark coming up into fourth position. Interesting to see how Canada, the early leaders, just couldn't, couldn't maintain it. They've been eaten up by uh, New Zealand. Italy looked like they're just going to slip through them as well as they slip back over the last sort of 700 meters. Um, they've, got to, they've got to rethink their race plan because it doesn't work. They've proved it again and again. It doesn't really work like that. So New Zealand have had an incredible third 500 meters as they go through the last timing mark, 500s to go. They've opened up significant uh, clear water over Canada and Canada who were early race leaders in this final themselves now being put under pressure by Italy in lane one. And the Italians are dragging with them. Look there in the middle of it all. The two, the number two boat there is Denmark bronze medalist from Beijing back in 2008, reforming for this year, the lure of London 2012 was too much for the Danish crew. Italy moved very well into, into second place there and uh, 36 strokes a minute moving sweetly, but New Zealand made a decisive move about 500 meters back, moved right through Canada and have taken about a good length and a half lead over the, the, the chasing field. So with Great Britain having finished fifth in this event at Munich, the first World Cup regatta, it would be interesting to see where the British crew would be in amongst all of this pack here as they all sprint now. They're right on the edge. They've got about 150 metres remaining. New Zealand are out there. They're taking advantage of the fact that the British crew aren't here. Out they go to about two lengths of clear water and still they're sprinting for the line. It's all about putting down a big benchmark here on the far side in lane number one. The Italians now are being put under pressure by Denmark. Here come Denmark. Up goes the race to the line though. It is New Zealand that win the gold. It is Italy that will hang on for that silver medal and Denmark push it on through and will get the bronze medal with Canada very disappointingly limping over the line in fourth position. Well, what a result for Canada who are early race leaders.